Qt is a popular cross-platform library for creating graphical user interfaces for personal computers and the like. It has theming and styling support, support for keyboard interaction and all common hotkeys, and most importantly, wide adoption and a large amount of tools to make working with it easier. Call me Laiko, and today I will tell you about Qt Designer, a graphical tool for creating Qt-based interfaces that will be ready to be integrated into your code. Sit down, boot up your project, and let me begin my tutorial. Let's begin with installation. For Windows, download and install Qt Executable Fund an official website or install third-party package like pic or pic6 using pip from command line that also includes it. Then, you need to check installation path, find designer, exe file here and launch it. For Linux, install Qt development tools package, then run designer command which will open Qt designer. After launching Qt designer, you can see interface of the app which parts I will highlight here. Main workspace. Object inspector. Property editor. Signal slash slot editor. Widget box. Buttons bar. And lastly, menu bar. With that, we are ready to start. First, we will create a new project, an empty main window. And one of the things that a lot of similar tutorials seems to say we need to do next is to just drag and drop our widgets from widget box and position it like something we would do in a vector graphics editor. But let us do exactly that, and we will see it doesn't scale well with different window sizes, and we probably wouldn't want our app to be locked for a specific resolution and aspect ratio. So we will use a different approach, layouts. The most basic layouts are vertical and horizontal ones. You can drag and drop elements in them to be resized and arranged automatically one after another. But the one we are going to use, grid layout, adds a layer of complexity by introducing ability to add items horizontally or vertically, and allowing one widget to take several cells of space given that they already exist because of how the elements are arranged. So what we need to do, is to add our widgets, namely aforementioned three buttons, text edit and line edit, and make our text edit span all available width while being the only one in the bottom row. After that we can also add a horizontal space to separate buttons from search bar, both making them not go too wide on big window sizes, and clearly indicating the difference in function. As we can see, our layout works nicely when we resize it, but it does not get resized automatically yet which can be done by right-clicking on empty space outside of layout, choosing layout option then one of aforementioned layouts. This option will make window act as layout, which will maximize a single widget put into it, or in our case, our layout. Next, we need to customize our widgets to fit their purpose. Changing the text on them is pretty easy, just double-clicking will select it and allow editing, but we actually need a lot more, so we will use property editor part of Qt Designer's interface. First, we need to set object name that will be used to identify our widgets in the Designer's interface and in application code afterwards. I use names and format a small first letter first word, big first letter for next words, allowing easily reading them without adding any spaces. Then we will set tooltip, that will be shown when hovering over element with mouse. It should contain a small description of what the object does. The thing that we will to afterwards is often referred to as optional, and I don't actually know a good way to set it. It's accessible name that will be read out loud for screen reader users such as visually impaired people, an accessible description that works as a tooltip for the same users. I can only say that accessible names should be readable, I like text on widgets that can be replaced with icons, and accessible description should contain tips on how to operate said widget from keyboard only. On search bar, we also need another property, since text set by double clicking is actual editable text we can interact with, and we need just a grayed out placeholder, we will use placeholder text property. After setting all the properties for all widgets, result will look something like this, with proper tooltips and text everywhere where needed. Then, we also should check tab order, order in which you focus next item using tap button from keyboard, which is especially useful for screen reader users, but can also be used by anyone in cases they don't have, or don't want to use mouse. In Qt Designer, tab order is automatically set based on order you added widgets, but you need to check if it's correct by going into tab mode using button from button bar and then checking numbers. 
If order seems counterintuitive, click on numbers in correct order or use tab order menu accessible from context menu by right clicking any of numbers. Our interface seems ready, but there are other things we will need. This things are shortcuts that speed up usage of software, and menu bar entries that allow adding rarely used functions that don't fit into main interface. Both are done using so-called actions which are added double clicking menu bar on our interface then renaming category double clicking again to set an actual entry, and then going into property editor to set shortcut property by clicking it and pressing the shortcut. And additionally, we can use signal slash slot editor to connect our buttons to actions, avoiding creating duplicating connections and code of application afterwards. We need to add a new connection, select button name as sender, click to signal action name as receiver, and trigger a slot. But there's also a specific action that I added that needs to do things backwards. Find, which of action find as sender, triggered a signal, search bar as receiver, and set focus as slot. After that, we just save our file in the send directory as our future code, and we can finally close Qt Designer and start making the app itself. I don't intend to do a detailed tutorial in this exact video, so I will use PyQt5, a Python language library for Qt, just as an example of how to connect our GUI to code. So to load an interface we have a two different ways. One is to convert a UI file which we can save from Qt Designer into Python code using PyUIC5 filename.ui greater than filename.py command. Then load that file in code as from interface filename import UI main window. Then use self UI equals UI main window and self UI setup UI self lens to load interface inside of init function of window class. The other one is to use UI CS library and load a UI file directly, converting at runtime, for which we need to import library. From PyQt5 import UIC and in it we just do UIC load UI interface filename UI self. Second methods add slight overhead to your application and require shipping UI file with it, but allows you to quickly test changes to UI file just by running the code. There's also some bug with second method that removes margins in main Windows central widget, so if you use it, you need to add margin properties manually for grid layout widget. I also set original margins of central widget to null, so it loads the same interface in both methods. To connect our actions to functions, we need to use code like self UI, action new file, trigger to connect self, create new file, or in case a second method, same but without the UI part. It uses the same names and signals as shown in Qt Designer, so you will easily understand which you need to use, like self UI, search bar, return press, connect self, search text, which is for searching text. If you cannot find signal you need, I suggest looking up in widget documentation for PySitor, which is another Qt library for Python, mostly compatible with PyQt we use. That concludes my guide on Qt Designer. You can see full code of working text editor I will link in the description, with tutorials and documentation you can use to find widget calls and properties you might need for your own project. So please, point out if I made any mistakes in the comments down below, and I hope to see you again later.